I love it when mackerel fever hits town. The start of the mackerel season always has anglers talking in hushed, excited tones. And there's so much to love about these fish. They grow big, they're fast, they're a fearsome predator, and they'll take a whole range of lures and baits. It's early morning, mackerel season. Matty with a good mate of mine, Fipsy, trying to find some of those stripy ones, the big sharp teeth. The, uh, the king mackerel in some countries they call them, they're the biggest of the mackerel species and that's what we're here this morning to try and find. We're, uh, a good way to catch them early on is to troll for them, we'll put out a nice spread of lures, try and find the fish first and then we'll work out how to catch them. About it, mate. What I'll say about how good that lure looked in the water with that little red head bobbing away. Fantastic. I'll get this other one in. We'll get the one fish we're hooked up to and worry about the rest of them later. Oh, you got some garb out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Welcome to Spain. Oh, yeah. Big, nice, big head chase up there. Oh, I've got the adrenaline going early, 15. Yeah, just a couple of minutes into it and we are on fire. We're still talking about where we're going to put the second rod and the third <laughs> rod. And... I don't think we need them today, no. Yeah, looks like a nice fish too, mate. Too many guys just let the fish run off. They forget about using the bait. It's the best tool you can have. Make sure you keep good distance between you and the fish. He's got some weight about him, mate, this fish. Yeah. We're here, we're here chasing a special kind of animal this morning. We're out here chasing Spanish mackerel and a lot of people, a lot of anglers out there, they've got a special place in their heart. They're, they're the biggest of the mackerel species. They've got bullet-like heads, very sharp teeth. They grow big. I think they get up to the odd 50, 60 kilo mark, some of our record size fish. And they are a lot of fun. Yeah. This is the nervous stage. Fish is getting close to the boat. He's probably still got a bit of life left in him. And they get to a boat and they tend to go a little bit crazy. They throw their head around. And you've got to back off a little bit on them at that stage. Too many people rush net shots and gaff shots. You want that fish to be at that stage of being nicely tied, lying there for a gaff shot, and you want to lead it over the gaff. A lot of fish get lost at this point. No, I've seen fish up to 20 kilos lost because people, they get so it's excited just, oh, about yeah. it. Suddenly you see a fish, you know, you're, you're, you're excited battling it, but suddenly you see it and logic goes out the window. It doesn't matter how many times I see a big Spaniard come up to the boat, I still get an adrenaline rush. But uh, he's not really done yet, so we'll just give him a couple more goes. He's nearly done. Here we go, I'll let him back to you, mate. And shot. we got him, and that's a good gaff shot well through the shoulder. It doesn't hurt the flesh of the fish. Well done, mate. Good mate. On. Yeah, he's a beauty, isn't he? Nice fish. Now you can see that razor sharp row of teeth these guys have got. The razor gang, they'll mesh together, and they're very good at biting through line. He's a really nice size. That's, a, that's an average size Spanish mackerel. It runs up and down our coastline. Fantastic sport. See what a lot of anglers get out there and chase these guys. They're really good on the table. They're one of our best eating mackerel species. Yeah, they're excellent eating fish, Nige. Uh, being a professional chef, I really like to prepare them. Uh, I waste a lot of fish, which people are surprised at because there's a beautiful area just down in under here and you can shishimi it yep. or you can cut it into nice chamfer cut chunks grill it or barbecue it, but uh, make sure you stay well away from these teeth, they are deadly animals. And see that fish has grabbed that, that halco, it's a, a crazy deep style lure which means it's going to dive down to those seven or eight metre depths, which is where we're starting to see a bit of a bait line, which if you get down to where the fish are, trawl through them with lures like that, there's a result, didn't take us long at all. Mate, we're spot on the track, look at the bait, the bait's hardening up. Just about on that mark again now. Look at the big right. arches underneath the bait. Gotta have some lures going straight through these. I'd say if I was a betting man, I reckon there might be reels buzzing in about a minute or two's time. Yeah, I've seen fish make a fool of me many times, but yeah, you would think this so, This is the Nige. spot. Look at these big arches down here, Nige. They could be billfish or massive Spanish mackerel. Could be anything under that bait school. Mate, that's it. 
Oh, we're just about on that mark. That bait's at the right level. We've got a lure pretty much on top of that bait at the moment, I think. So it's got to be close to, to strike time, you'd have to say. Oh. Smoking you, mate. Well done. <laughs> I turned around, as I turned, I just watched the rod buck and it happened all at once. Well, that deep diver's on fire, so I might go down a little bit deeper with my lure next time. Oh, those head shakes are such Spaniard head shakes. They just give it to you. He's just, he's swimming around there now, just doing his best to shake that thing out of his mouth. This is when a lot of fish come undone, they've got such savage, savage, savage head shakes. This is when a hook might pull. Anyway, I've got weight on him. I'm not going to go too hard on him. When he's shaking his head at me, I'm just giving him the rod. I'll just keep tension on him, but I'll let him shake away. And hopefully not one of those hooks to pull free. How was that? We saw that bait, we knew the mark was coming, we saw the arches come up underneath. That was what both of us went. It's got to happen here. Plus I looked point. around at a rod and it just went off. Touch this gaff up, make sure that we get him. One go. Oh, he's a serious animal, Nige. He's just sounding on any. I've backed this drag rod off, I'm just going to let him do his thing. I, I, when, they, when those head shakes get thrown at you, you don't want your tackle to be at its most taut. Oh, he's a good fisherman, see him down there now. You just want to soften up those head shakes as much as you can. I'm going to use the rod, I'm going to use that drag. Oh, he's a bit bigger than the last one, I think. Yeah, he's not oh, done he's yet, either. Oh, water at us. That's not a very nice fish. I'll bring him around here, mate. He's, he's got that well and truly entrenched in his mouth. There's a shot for you, isn't it? Big toothy critter. Whoa, lovely gaff shot with my mate. And you can see. <laughs> Settle down. That's how old uh, ex Spanish mackerel professionals deal with fish. How many times have you seen that, mate? 2,000, 3,000? Yeah, I've seen it a, a fair bit over the years, Nige, but what I hate to see is people gaffing fish down here and Spalling wrecking the, the flesh. Food. Get them up around here, around the top of the shoulder or through the head. That's a perfect gaff shot. You're you don't. Uh, yourself already. Yeah. And you don't wreck any of the good eating stuff. He's a good fish, Nort. Just get some pliers, I'll get that lure out. Starting to show the war wounds already. You'll notice the other thing that's happened now, that leader's been scuffed up a little bit. We're using uh, 60 and 80 pound leaders, purely because these guys have got sharp teeth. With a 60 to 80 pound leader, you've got a chance that they can have a couple of cracks of a bite on that and they're not gonna bite you straight through. I'll go and clean that leader up now. Cut that little frayed section off, retie it. Make sure those hooks are sharp. We know where the fish are. I think it's Phipsy's turn. Yeah, I'm going to go do a deep diver. I've been uh, running a big shallow runner. They're obviously down deep on those bait skills, Nige. So uh, that's a great thing about having a couple of uh, good ideas on board. You work as a team, are we catch good, a few are we fish. Good ideas? I don't know. <laughs> We're good something. He's a beauty. Okay, I'll get him in that uh, slurry. Uh, we had to talk him into it, Nige, but uh, he finally decided to eat it. Oh, skill, mate. Tickled it for him. It just tickled his fancy. Did you see the technique I used then? That's an old thing when we were pro fishing. If they come up and have a grab at it and they don't grab it, just feed a bit back to them, then wiggle it, and it drives them insane. So they have to come up and eat it. They can't help themselves. Let's see what we got here. The great thing about being able to troll hard bodies for these fish, Nige, is you don't have to worry too much about bait. Nope. And uh, if you can match the hatch, if you've got something that looks like a, a live yellowtail or a slimy mackerel, usually works a trick. <sighs> Nige, that bait was too thick not to hold fish. Oh, right? I, had to. I even said in 30 seconds I reckon we'll get a strike, and sure enough, we did. You just get to get a feeling about things, about where these fish are going to be. And just by giving a little short sharp. So the Rodney's gone right around the other side of the boat. This is the great thing about having a centre console, is you can go all the way around the boat to chase them. You talk about the strength of these fish. I'm 110 kilos, played a bit of footy in my day, and these things will still bend you over. And they're not big fish. The fish out here are off noose, they grow up to about 25 kilos is a big one. Average fish six to eight. And uh, the fish we've been getting today, what we call the school Spanish mackerel, around that six to eight kilo mark. Great eating size, great fun, and reasonably easy to catch when they're in the mood. A la today. A la fish today. Yeah. That's what we like. You see, the oh, water's very dirty. Yeah. We've had a mile of rain. 
over the last few weeks, and we've just come outside the dirty water line. The, the, boat, the boat's just draw past us and hooked up as well. Uh, it's great to see other people catching fish too, Nige. Uh, That's it. To... Oi, here we go. Not happy. Okay. The, the interesting thing, we're talking about how dirty this water is, but what we've been finding is the bait's been sounding just underneath that dirt water line, and the fresh tends to sit on top of the salt and a lot of the bait is sitting down there, which was another reason we started thinking that we needed to get some lures a little bit deeper down. We've uh, both, both adapted tactics now. Where we've got deeper diving lures getting down to that, probably trolling around the six metre mark, and straight away we're catching fish. It's, uh, a lot of people think sometimes think trawling's just a game of get your boat out and just troll something behind your boat, but it's, uh, if you can use your brain at the same time, try and find the fish and then work out the best thing you can do to get lures to them, you're gonna find you're in the money pretty quickly, and here comes our fish. Don't be in such a hurry to get him. Lead him into the boat. Nige will pin him for me. He's a nice fish, Nige. I'm up to my leader to there. The leader. Look at those stripes. Well done, mate. That's all right, mate. He's, uh, he's a good fish. Look at those colours. Beautifully conditioned fish. There's so much bait out here at the moment. They're in excellent condition and uh, they're on the chew, mate. That's it. And that's all we're out here chasing this morning. A favourite amongst Queenslanders and a big favourite right along the coastline wherever you can catch them. The Spanish mackerel, also the narrow bar, they're called blue mackerel as well. Like I said, in some countries called the king mackerel because he's earned the right of being the biggest of these sharp toothed critters. He's the ultimate hunter, look at him, sharp nose. Teeth that are made to disarm and dismember in seconds. And he's got a body built for speed. Apart from a head and a tail, this guy's just muscle. Nige, yeah. look at the dark coloration on the top. That gives them stealth, so they get up on the surface so other predators can't see them. Predators. And they get up to about 60 kilometres an hour, so they can really move through a bait school. Uh, I wouldn't want to be a little uh, slimy mackerel or yellow tail out here. <laughs> no They're way. just the ultimate predator. That's it. They own the water at times amongst the mackerel, and uh, that's why they hold a special place for some guys like us. That being said, I might get them in the slurry and get out amongst them again. I love fishing for these guys. Just to show you what these fish can do, pull this one out of the box. This is a mate of mine. He was fishing recently for these guys and had this is one session on the Spanish. And the other lesson out of it is notice the Ben hook. That was the last fish he hooked and lost. And you'll find these days a lot of lure manufacturers will put hooks that aren't of the top notch tempered steel quality for a reason that it costs a lot of money to do that. So that they'll leave it to the choice of the the consumer to decide what hooks they, they put on them, but all the lures which we're throwing out the back at the moment have all been all had those hooks replaced. They've got owner 1x and 2x grade temper steels of hook quality on those lures so that they don't do things like straight and such as that one. So there's a lesson for you. Get your lure down to the depth and make sure when you if you do manage to get a fish to eat it, you've got a, a hook quality stuck on your lure that's going to get that fish back to the net and the gaff for you. Hey, toothy critters. There's some war wounds for you. Well, here we go. All right. I didn't want to lure out. Oh, you're on two nights. You're on. He's grabbed it. Give it a wiggle. Give it a wiggle. Give it a wiggle. It's a better fish. Better fish. Oh, yeah, got him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> oh, how good's that? Right. <laughs> Double hook up, fantastic. Well, that's what I was saying earlier when I got that fish when he came up and he wasn't quite hooked. Give it a wiggle, they can't resist it. Just like if you're soft plastic fishing and you get a hit, put it back in their face, give it a wiggle. The bigger the wiggle, the bigger the giggle. Tell you what, these fish got some weight about them too. Benefit too, this bait's been moving around. If you're watching our sand, or every time we hook a fish, we drift away from it and we come back and it takes us a while to find it. The beauty of a, a trolling technique is you cover water. We're not sitting on a patch of ground with an anchor out burling up waiting for fish to come to us. We're active, actively moving around an area that's holding fish, and they're moving as well, but by moving around, we're able to keep finding them, keep getting in amongst them. Yeah, I'm up. You up? Yeah, I'm yeah. still slugging down deep. Quality fish, Nige. You gaff on your own? Yeah, I'll be right, mate. I'll just let mine play down deep. He's playing yeah. slugging away. I'll come and help you out in a sec. So much fun catching these fish. And you only need a couple for feed. The bag limit is three. 
in uh, Queensland, three per person, and that's plenty of fish. Look at the size of that. He's a massive animal. He's only just hooked. Leave him. <clears throat> Once again, gaff him through the shoulder and the head. Another fine Spanish mackerel. We're both using slightly different tackle today. pipsy has got the overhead and the mono all the way through to his lure, which gives him the stretch. I've gone for a tactic of using a, a short but, but reasonably flexibly tipped spin rod. And I'm using braided line as well. I'm using braided line just to help that lure get down a little bit deeper. And what I'm doing then though is to, to reduce the shock factor on the fish because there's no stretch when I'm fishing braid is I've got, I'm fishing reasonably light drag settings which allows me to give that fish the shock absorption we need to try and get him through to the boat. Oh, he's well hooked. I don't, I don't think he was getting away. Need some help, Norge? Very dangerous fish to grab, but uh, turn like them upside down, they tend to settle down. A bit. He behaved very well, Norge. Cool. See, by holding them upside down, they become a bit disorientated, but uh, if you want to release him, just spear him back into so the he's, water. He's not bleeding at all, this fish. No. We've handled him nice and gently. We've got enough to eat. Yep. I've seen him swim away to catch another day. Righto, here he goes. See you later, big fella. Ta-ta. Well done, mate, double hook up. Amazing the difference of keeping those two lures in the water for a little bit longer. Yeah, and particularly with yours, by when you got the strike, give it a bit of a wog, they'll turn around, they think they've disabled that lure, come back and eat it. A lot of anglers out there will often choose to use wire when they're fishing for Spaniards. Now, I've used wire a lot in the past and I've caught fish on it. But where you can get away with it, a 60 to 80 pound leader is a lot less visible to some of these fish when they're a bit fussy. And as you can see, at 60 pounds, that fish has had a good little gnaw on that on the way through. I've managed to land it and day, everything's still intact. There's a bit of shaving happening there to show you just how sharp those teeth are, but that's no dramas. It's, it's lasted back to the boat, got the fish. We'll just now trim that up and go again. You don't always need to use wire. We're gonna start trolling some baits now for Spanish mackerel and we're gonna take a bit of a varied approach. Fipsy's gonna get his, uh, his chin weighted bait down fairly deep. So he's gonna add some extra weight on top of it in the way of a big barrel sinker. I'm gonna keep one out the back and, and, and in that top one to two meters of water. But I'm gonna take the same principle. I've got, got this weighted chin pieces, which, which is gonna sit at the base of the bait, just behind the skirt, which is gonna give it some extra pulsing action in the water. Put the metal prongs through the head of the bait and that's going to allow it to sit upright in the water just like a bait would and swim nice and naturally. It's going to be rigged with some gang hooks behind it because these guys are toothy critters and hopefully when one of these comes and eats that, should be able to show you another Spanish mackerel in the boat hooked on a bait, a trolled bait. The rig I'm using here today is pretty simple and uh, anyone can put it together. Fire those, ganged up, a swivel so your bait can uh, just sort of wiggle around in the current and just a crimp and just make sure your crimp is really tight. You don't want to get uh, busted off by one of these big toothy critters. Just trim him off with your excess line. I've got a hundred pound jinkai which is uh, mono means you'll get more strikes and a little squid skirt here and that will pull down over the top of our pilly and uh, when we bring that through the water that just looks like a big bait fish going and a Spanish mackerel can't resist it. Okay. The way I like to rig these baits is to firstly measure them so your last hook goes right through the nose and it's a good idea to turn them upside down and rig them here because the fish won't see it with a skirt over the top. So measure him up, you've got your four five O's. Just whack him in the tail there. Bring the other one along, make sure your hooks are really embedded right down along that dorsal line. One goes in there. Last one goes right up on the nose. Push him through and up underneath that bottom jaw. That's very important. So he stays nice and straight. Bring your skirt and pull him down over the top and pull the head right up into the skirt. That'll stop him from spinning. If the bait's spinning, you've got no chance of catching a fish. When trolling lures, place the lures about 20 to 25 metres behind the boat at a speed where the lure has full action but doesn't leave the water. For baits, about the same distance, but at a speed where the baits track straight and true and doesn't spin. This will vary depending on sea conditions. Notice that skirt, so lifted up the line because this fish has ripped the line through the water so quickly. And that was the skirt which was sitting on top of the bait, giving it that little bit of extra action. Fish coming under the boat now.
these fish love a slowly presented and trolled bait. If you can get it right, you get the speed right and the pre presentation right, they suck us for it. That took us all of about a minute. You don't want to be too impatient at this stage because you've got to remember, you've got a chin weight of bait. So this fish is hooked and he's got a nice big weight sitting on, hanging out of his mouth, which when he throws those head shakes at you, make it easier for them to throw it. It means you just want to be patient, back your drag off, let the rod do its work, soften those head shakes as much as you can. Amazing there, sitting in this dirty water. Oh yeah, it's a lovely fish. It's a wahoo. It's a wahoo. It's a wahoo, mate. Now I'm not going to tail a wahoo. And there's a reason for that, because they are vicious animals. Oh, and they don't like boats. Oh, they're always welcome, the wahoo. They're uh, one, of the, one of the family, one of the cousins, and they have got teeth which match these guys. Have a look at them, they're just built for speed, one of the fastest fish. Right, now shot. Now that's, that's what a good gaff man does with a fish, mate. It's pinned it. Mate, he's a good fish, he's pretty solid. And, have a look at that rig. There you go, that was a, uh, we rigged a little bonito. Chin, chin weighted, pulsing action. The boat was slowly ticking away, fed it out the back. It obviously got down to the right depth. The fish was cruising around wondering what our boat was doing. A bit of noise out there in the water and there you go. He's gone, oh, there's a bit of food. Smells all right, looks all right. I'm going to eat it. That's a beauty. We might get a photo, I think. Oh, I reckon there's photo opportunity, mate. Slug lures like these Halco twisties have been around forever and a day and they continue to catch as many fish as when I think they first came on the market. They look all a part of a, of a bait fish. They're heavy which means you can cast a fish from a long way away which means when you do find those spooky fish or fish in deeper water these make a great tool to put some hooks into some of those fish. And uh, at the moment we've got some bait and some fish sounding down about 15 to 30 metres of water. We've just stopped the boat on top of them. These are a fantastic way to continually keep dropping a lure and ripping it up through those fish until you get one to pop up and grab it. They don't cost a lot of money, they're very effective. Definitely worth, if you're out there chasing the Spaniards, got to have some of these in your box. How about if I get one in the water? Nice and easy when you're using slugs like this. We know the fish are about 15 to 30 metres of water. I'm drifting back over them. All I'm going to do is put the slug behind the boat, 10 to 15 metres let it sink. Now in my head I'm doing the maths and I'm counting this down so I'm, I've got a fairly good idea where it is in the water column. What I want to do is get it probably about 35-40 metres down beneath those fish, rip it up through them. Once I've got to about 10, 5, 5 to 10 metres below the boat, I'll drop it back down and undertake the process again. If you get it right, you're in for a whole lot of fun. There we go, counting it down. I'm around that 30 metre mark now. Gauge the reel and Start winding. Oh, it's good fun when you can cast and hit them. We're just showing you there's other ways to catch them besides trolling. We found the bait and we decided to sit on top of it. We've seen fish arching in about 15, 30 metres of water. And we're just dropping metal bladed lures and plastics down onto these fish. And what a great way to catch them, just cranking them back up through the bait. This is a 6 to 10 kilo spin rod. Berkeley drop shot, loaded with a Sauron STX-60, fishing with 20 pound braid, 30 pound leader, lovely light outfit, you can cast it all day. It's nice and fuel effective too, sit on top of them and catch them. Most of the mackerel tribe are really susceptible to lures that are ripped through them really quickly. These guys are no exception to that, here we go, oh yeah. Nice fish. Shaking his head at me. Trying to throw that weight away. Let's throw that head around, try to get rid of that weight. When you are fishing with bladed lures, you do lose a few because of that. As they throw that head shake, the, the added weight of the lure allows them to throw it out. Oh yeah, here goes, 50. You'll see that, you'll see that bladed lure flashing away on his mouth there. Might just tail him, mate, and get him back in the water, I think. Yeah, good idea. 
just let him quieten down a bit first. We could put him in the net and subdue him. There we go. Nice. That's a good way to keep the teeth away from you too, is just to uh, put them in the net for a sec, calm them down. Once they're upside down, they don't play up too much. I'll just get the pliers out while we're there. There we go. Excellent. Now, you don't have to kill all these fish, a bag limit of three, and uh, there's plenty of fish there, so it's good Six to put a few away. Fish, yeah. Like I said, we, we've, got, we've, we've caught a, our dinner tonight, for tonight already, and if you get the chance to let him go, I'm going to spear this guy, I'm not going to hold him out for too long. They don't like being out for too long. They're uh, fast moving fish, I'll spear him and I'll let him swim for another day. I thought he had oh, two goes yeah. out of Oh, yeah, there. baby! <laughs> Is this the most fun you can have standing up? Oh yes. There's nothing better than when you spin it into them and they grab it, I think. Oh yeah. What a rush. Have it. This is one of the fusses about. A narrow barred mackerel. Lovely Spanish mackerel. Good average size, probably touch, touch bigger than average for our part of the world. What a beautiful fish. I'll get the slug out and get him back in the water. Right up, mine's going back. Spear. Give him a squeeze on the oh. tail. There you go. <laughs> the go? How much on. fun was that? Mackerel can be a fussy beast at times. So having a few approaches up your sleeve is a great option because some days they'll take one approach and one approach only. You've just got to be good enough to work out what that is.